Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So today we're gonna to be talking about Niji Sanji, Ian Liber, Hex Haywire, because yesterday it was announced that he'll be graduating from the agency in two weeks. And Hex would go on to his own stream and talk about some of the reasons for this graduation, citing artistic differences with the company, as well as a desire to improve himself and evolve in certain ways that he feels like he can't with his current position. But you have loved me so well and none of this is your fault okay this is not your fault this was planned since february this was planned since december um i have been thinking about this none of this is your fault it's i'm not leaving because of you i'm not leaving leaving because of a liver i'm not leaving because i'm leaving because of artistic differences i'm leaving because i've I feel like this is the right choice for me. I'm leaving because I I want to pursue a different kind of thing. I'm leaving because I feel like um, growth both personally and in every other facet will be will be expedited in different ways when I leave, you know? So quite predictably, a lot of people are reacting to this graduation announcement. His fans are in mourning about the announcement, and also a lot of Niji Sanji livers are coming into the replies to help uh, support him as he moves on to the next chapter of his life. However, a lot of people are also looking at the career and legacy of Hex Haywire, and they're looking at things that are quite controversial. And I believe there's two general controversies that sum up his career, that is parasocialism in his community, as well as two different occasions where he essentially backstabbed former Niji Sanji talents as they were in their lowest states. And I'm of course talking about the termination of Selen Tatsuki and the termination of Zion Lanza. Now, Armchair Expert does a great series of videos talking about these events and how they have many parallels to one another in the termination of these livers and also the fact that Niji Sanji would use its own active livers to openly demonize and disparage the former talents. Now, let's begin with Sayu. So, Sayu is someone who's returned to her past life, but she had a brief stint about a year and a half ago with Niji Sanji under the role of Zion Lanza. Now, she had at least some level of closeness with Hex Haywire because they debuted in the same generation together. However, she wouldn't be around very long. She was terminated roughly a month or two after she started with Niji Sanji EN. And we've talked about this termination announcement many times before, but to sum it up very quickly, they gave around a dozen reasons she was terminated from the company. They essentially try to paint her as some war criminal doing all these horrible things. However, if you look at the language of the violations and then compare it to the actual actions they're referring to, a lot of these violations are nothing burgers. For example, there's copyright issues, right? But the actual copyright issue was the fact that she was promoting an original song made by another Niji Sanji Ian Liver, which she apparently did not have permission to do. Another violation cited some sort of inappropriate use of sponsorships, where in that case, she made a joke about her stream being sponsored by D's Nuts. Like, it's ridiculous. However, the one rule violation that was cited that caused the most controversy was a section that said offensive remarks regarding S.A. Now, this was given no further context by Niji Sanji and basically left it to the imagination of readers to guess what she was doing. And a lot of people thought she was making some sort of reference to real-life victimization. However, the actual context was a joke she made about a fictional character. A fictional character in a game she was playing was assaulted, and then she essentially said she understands why they did it because the character was attractive. That was it. It was not about anyone in real life. However, that would prove to be very damaging to this entire situation because after her termination, multiple Niji Sanji livers, not just any livers, her gen mates would come forward and make statements trying to lambast her. And the one that caused the most damage was Hex Haywires. There is no doubt that caused the most damage. In his statement that we're going to listen to in a second, he essentially tries to make an emotional connection between her comments about that video game character and real-life abuse he suffered when he was younger. During his stream, Hex reiterates many of the points made by his genmates. However, what separates this statement from the others is how Hex begins his address. 
definitely I do want to say first and foremost as both a liver for Niji Sanji uh, and someone who has suffered through uh, essay sexual assaults as a young person I uh, or as a younger individual I, I, I cannot condone a lot of the the jokes and a lot of the, the things that she said and it devastates me it, it devastates me because I never would have guessed that it would come to this it would happen this abruptly now to be clear publicly sharing that you're a victim of SA or any other form of abuse is not itself a bad thing but what complicates the way that Hex has done so here is how his victimhood is being used to qualify his condemnation of Zion. Regardless of his intentions, this effectively frames Zion's infractions as a personal slight against Hex and implies a degree of malice behind her words and actions. So before we go any further, I want to state the obvious. What happened to Hex Haywire is a horrible thing. However, I think the mention of that was an attempt by him and Niji Sanji to weaponize what happened to him against Zion to make them look bad. I think it was an attempt to demonize her so people wouldn't question their termination of her and to basically make her the villain of this story by essentially taking these comments about a fictional character and then making an emotional connection to real life victimization that Hex Haywire suffered when he was a child. And seeing that, and also over and over again, relaying that he was hurt by what Sayu did, I think it encouraged his very parasocial community to go out and attack Sayu as a result. I think they did that, they saw what was going on, they saw the helplessness of Hex in that situation and the hurt that he was going for. And they looked for the identifiable target in that situation, which was Zion slash Sayu, and they attacked her. And the harassment campaign that came out of this, and I think a lot of it is attributable to Hex's video, was crazy. She was harassed in mass. She was slandered. She was doxxed. She was threatened, her family was threatened. It was an absolutely terrible situation that a lot of people were cheering on as it happened because they had completely dehumanized her at that point in their minds because they were going out and trying to support their favorite VTuber, in this case, Hex Haywire. Now, of course, I think another reason this all happened is because Niji Sanji wanted to discredit Sayu. And eventually she would come out and share the story of Zion and Zion's experience at Niji Sanji. And basically the statement describes a very toxic and harmful work environment for employees at Niji Sanji. Now, a lot of people believe this when it first happened and it was first reported by Sayu, but a lot of other people completely dismissed what she was saying. They dismissed her as a clout chaser, as a liar, because they believed and had such an emotional response to everything that the Niji Sanji livers and Niji Sanji in general were feeding them about Zion slash Sayu. However, now looking back at this story that was posted about a year and a half ago, we know there is a lot of truth to what she was saying. And we know that thanks to Selene Tatsuki. Now, Doki Bird is someone who has shared her experiences as a Niji Sanji liver, a former liver with the company. And the termination of Selene Tatsuki back in February of this year is a very similar set of scenarios to the termination of Zion. They tried to smear her in their termination announcement. And when that didn't work, they turned to their own livers. Does that sound familiar? Well, on Alira Pandora's channel, they released a joint statement. It was her, Ike Eveland, and Vox Akuma. And this statement will likely go down as the worst PR move in VTubing history because... What they tried to do was smear a very likable person. Selene Totsky slash Doki Bird is a very likable person. And they tried to not only dismiss all of the suffering that she experienced, including attempts on her own life as a result of what was going on at the company, but they also tried to paint her in a negative light. They tried to frame her as this 
erratic, and even dangerous person who they were afraid of. And this statement would backfire very, very badly. However, you have to understand that the majority of Niji Sanji EN livers supported this statement. And who supported this statement in particular? Well, you probably already guessed it. Hex Haywire, who not only supported and shared this statement, he gave his official stamp of approval on these sets of statements, quoting the tweet by Alira sharing the video, saying this, I fully support and stand behind my peers on this message. It's been so difficult and trying on all of us. I hope to have you, he have you there. Thank you for your love and patience. So not only is he co-signing everything that happened in that video, the horrible things they were saying about Doki Bird, and also the fact that they were openly sharing that they were, without her permission, sharing Doki Bird's medical records. Hex is looking at that and saying, he stands by everything that was included. And not only that, he goes a step further. He goes a step further and tries to paint himself and the other Niji Sanji Ian livers as the victims in this situation. So we have Doki Bird, who was in a very terrible space, right? Two attempts on her own life as a fallout from everything that happened when she was with the company. And somehow, Hex Haywire is the victim. That is insane. How do these things sit with people? How do you look at what he's done to multiple livers over the course of the last two years and think, yeah, he's a totally great guy? These things are extremely alarming and very telling about the kind of person that he is. Now I want to go back and talk about the other set of controversies that Hex Haywire has faced during his time with Niji Sanji, and that is claims that his community is very parasocial. Now when you look at other livers who have been accused of being parasocial, like Vox Akuma, for example, those are nowhere near as parasocial communities as his. You can look at various things. I mean, there's no single tweet or post you can look at and say, yep, that's a parasocial community. But if you look at the type of content he makes, and also the way that his fans interact with his content, the way they look at him, the way they view their relationship with him, there's something very parasocial about that. Even looking at the tags, he has had multiple controversies where people are putting self-harm in the hashtags of his uh, Niji Sanji account to get attention from him. There was another situation where he was in trouble because he seemingly was encouraging people to trauma dump in super chat messages, people basically paying to trauma dump on him. And if you look at some of the other hashtags, he has, he has a hashtag or the community created a hashtag of selfies from the community. And he was liking these selfies and in a sense, encouraging more of it to happen. So there's definitely some parasocialism going on with this community. And I can't think of anything else that really sums up everything that's gone on with that than what's happened over the past couple of days. There's been a very serious situation that he was facing where one user who was a member of his community uh, tried to fake their own game end. And eventually users would figure out and connect the dots and realize this person was faking ending their own life and they were active on other accounts when they were supposedly gone, right? And people were angry at Hex Haywire and demanding that he somehow fixes the situation where he would get onto his alt account and actually address it and say that he's facing all of these threats and negative feedback from people who are basically waiting for him to somehow fix this. And I'll take his side on this. That's not fair. He doesn't control other people's actions and lives. But I will say, looking at everything going on in his community and the way this all just went haywire is really a reflection of what's been going on for a while. Basically two years at this point where parasocialism has run absolutely wild in his community and there's no denying it. It's very obvious it's there, but this was essentially the last thing he did before this graduation announcement. And honestly, it's all just really messy. But at the end of the day, he is moving on, uh, whether he moves on to his past life account or he moves on to some new uh, VTuber related career, we will not know, but that is what we know for now. A lot of concerning things have happened during his career and will we get answers about those various concerns in the coming weeks, years, what have you? I don't really think so, but it is a possibility because I think there's a lot of things he's done that require further explanation. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.